I just went viral for saying the iPhone naming scheme makes no sense. The reason I made that short was because of this moment from a recent Unbox Therapy video. We're watching, we're like, wow, iPhone 15, 15 times we've done this. This triggered my actually reflex and led to my ultimate point. The iPhone 15 is the 17th generation, meaning it's actually been 17 times we've done this. So why isn't the iPhone 15 called the iPhone 17? Well, a lot of you wrote comments telling me where I went wrong. And in this video, I'm going to address all of it. So you can decide for yourself if the iPhone naming scheme actually makes sense. Let's start from the very beginning with the very first iPhone, iPhone. That's the name. A lot of people mentioned I forgot the iPhone 2G, but it turns out there is no iPhone 2G. When the second iPhone came out, it was called the iPhone 3G because one of its biggest new features and main selling points was it now had 3G networking. The original iPhone only supported slower 2G edge networks, which led some people to start retroactively calling it iPhone 2G. But Apple themselves never used this name. They would instead refer to it as the original iPhone or the first generation iPhone. So right off the bat, we already know Apple considers the iPhone 3G to be the second generation. But what about what came next? The iPhone 3GS. Apple's first ever S phone, and the only one where they tell us what the S means. Now the S simply stands for, it stands for speed. The 3GS set the standard for what we could expect out of an S phone. It used the same design as the previous generation, had a faster processor, had an upgraded camera, and it had brand new features like video recording and a digital compass. But was it a third generation? Well, according to Steve Jobs, yes it was. We're introducing iPhone 4. Fourth generation iPhone. This means the iPhone 3GS had to have been the third generation. And this makes sense, because if the 3G and 3GS were part of the same generation, then that means the iPhone 4 should have actually been called the iPhone 3. In which case, the iPhone naming scheme already makes no sense, but so far everything's okay. The real problem begins with the iPhone 4S. This phone should have been called iPhone 5. That may seem a little weird in retrospect, but this is actually what rumors were suggesting it would be called before it was announced. Now, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time addressing the S phone issue because it was one of the most frequent comments I received. A lot of you do not consider the S phones to be separate generations, but we've already seen that Steve Jobs and Apple themselves consider the first S phone, the 3GS, its own generation. And if we go by the rules it put in place, the 4S should qualify too. It used the same design as the previous generation, had a faster dual core processor, had an upgraded camera, and brand new features like HD video and Siri. Another reason why I think we need to consider the S phones as new generations is because Apple themselves have not been consistent with what is and isn't an S phone. For example, the iPhone 7. It certainly meets the criteria to be an S phone when compared to the iPhone 6S. But what do you call the S phone that comes after an S phone? iPhone 6S, 6S R, 6S II? We may never know. So let's grant you the iPhone 7. Let's say even though it used the same design as the previous generation, had a faster processor, an upgraded camera, and brand new features like portrait mode and the lack of a headphone jack, this was enough to qualify not as an S phone, but a separate generation. How is it possible the iPhone 8 is not the 7S? In fact, Apple's marketing team fooled the rumor mill again because back before they were announced, rumors suggested the iPhone 8 would be called the 7S and the iPhone 10 was gonna be called iPhone 8. So, inconsistent. Apple did this again with the upgrade from the 10R to the 11. These phones are practically identical. iPhone 11 reuses the same design as the 10R, has a faster processor, added an ultra-wide camera, and has brand new features like slow fees. This phone is less of an upgrade compared to several S phones, but it's not called the 10RS, it's the 11. It gets even worse when you look at the 12, 13, and 14. Apple considers these three separate generations, which they are, but let's compare the 12 to the 14. It reuses the same design, has the same processor as the 13, so an upgrade from the 12 at least. It doesn't really have an upgraded camera, but it does have improved image processing and some new video modes. And as for brand new features, I guess crash detection? So the 14 alone barely meets the requirements of an S phone when compared to the 12, but all three of these have their own numbers, not an S amongst them. Going back to all the comments about how the S phones don't count as separate generations, I have a question for you. Why is the jump between a 5 and 5S not a new generation? 
but the jump from 13 to 14 is? It's a rhetorical question because the real answer to all of this comes down to marketing. The iPhone names only somewhat make sense from a marketing perspective. This will also answer all the questions I received about why Apple skipped the iPhone 2 and the iPhone 9. iPhone 3G made more sense from a marketing perspective. It immediately told people, this is the iPhone with 3G, whereas iPhone 2 just says, this is the second one. You'll also notice there's no iPhone 3, because that kind of sounds like a downgrade from a 3G. So 3GS also makes sense from a marketing perspective. The iPhone 4 was the first time Apple technically gave an iPhone a number, and it's the only time it actually represented the current generation. If Apple had called the iPhone 4S the iPhone 5, and just up the number sequentially every year, which is what they do today, the iPhone 6S would have been the iPhone 9. The iPhone 7 would have been the iPhone 10. And then who knows, Apple probably would have been forced to get rid of the numbers altogether for the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10. Perhaps they could have called it iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro. Now, I'm not the only person who thinks the iPhone names don't make sense. The former creative director for Apple's advertising, Ken Siegel, the guy behind the Think Different ads and responsible for the lowercase i, has written extensively about how the iPhone names are unnecessarily complex and awkward. He says the S phones have reinforced a popular misconception that innovation only happens every other year and that it's tied to new form factors. But as we've seen, this isn't true. And as he points out, some of the most important updates have come in the S phones. 64-bit processing, Siri, Touch ID, 3D Touch was pretty cool. He makes a case that Apple should not only abandon the S, but the numbers too suggesting a lineup along the lines of iPhone, iPhone Plus, iPhone Pro, and iPhone Max. This could also extend to the iPhone SE, which could be called iPhone Mini or iPhone Air. This would bring the iPhone naming into alignment with how they name iMacs, MacBooks, even now iPads. The names don't change, and instead we would just note the generation or model year. But I admit, from a marketing and sales perspective, I do get why they like the new sequential numbering system. The updates these days are very incremental, so adding a whole new number makes it seem like a bigger upgrade than it actually is. I just wish that number matched the current generation. All right, next, I wanna quickly call out something a lot of you noticed, that in addition to releasing new iPhones every year, they also release a new version of iOS, and thankfully, the naming scheme for iOS actually makes sense. This is how we ended up with the brand new iPhone 15 launching with iOS 17. Some of you also notice this applies to Apple's latest and greatest chips too, which is why the iPhone 15 Pro has an A17 Pro chip inside. Now, I haven't mentioned what may have been my most frequent comment, and that was, how do the iPhone SE and 5C fit into the whole 17 generations thing? Well, I did create a short that quickly addresses all three iPhone SE models, so check that out if you haven't already. And I'm currently working on a video all about the iPhone 5C. It's an interesting case, pun intended. So if it's ready to watch, I'll link to it right here. Otherwise, check out one of my other videos right here. Thank you so much for watching.